Good morning, everybody. I pray that everything is going well and uh, that you're being hopeful and encouraged. I know that that might be a bit of a challenge at this point because of not only the here we are near 100 days of in our restricted lifestyle based upon uh, an overreach, I think, an overreaction by the part of the government, but also we, we see all sorts of disturbing thing going. The, not only is the economy struggling, not only people struggling with isolation and loneliness, have, suicide rates have gone up and a lot of other things that have uh, really created some dysfunctionality in the culture. Now we have the the, the protests and the uh, the violence, the takeover of downtown Seattle. I mean, that is even disturbing people more and more than they ever have been. And then we add to it something else that just happened uh, two days ago, which I think that probably many people didn't even notice because it didn't get a lot of coverage. But at the same time, it is cataclysmic in terms of how it's going to affect society and particularly the church. Um, Basically, what happened this week was the Supreme Court of the United States ruled on a couple of suits that were brought against uh, various individuals uh, claiming they had violated their civil rights. One was a, a homosexual man, the other one was a transsexual. Uh, it, most interesting was a transsexual gentleman who said that uh, he worked at a funeral home and he was a man, and then one day he showed up at work dressed as a woman and he declared that he was now a woman. And the owners basically said, you're fired. And so he's saying they had no right to fire him because the, the, the uh, civil rights law of 1964 guarantees that you can't be discriminated against based upon sex. And in that, he, they are purporting and putting forth a whole new interpretation that sex does not mean biological sex, male or female, but rather it extends to sexual identity or sexual uh, um, proclivity or interest and so forth. In other words, it refers to homosexuality. It refers to all sorts of uh, transsexual behaviors, bisexual behavior, whatever it is. In other words, the word sex is given a whole much fuller meaning than the f people who wrote, wrote the law in 1964 had ever imagined. And in fact, even uh, Judge Neil Cort Gorsuch, who um, actually was the first judge nominated by Trump and who was supposed to be a c conservative, uh, said that he was giving it this very novel interpretation. In fact, his statement was, the limits of the drafter's imagination, the drafters being the person who first wrote the law, that the met, supply no reason to ignore the law's demands. In other words, he kind of in a crazy double think, double speak, he says the the it never entered into the imagination of those who wrote the law that it would extend to homosexuality and transgender behavior and bisexuality and all the rest of that. That was never even a concept in their mind. They were thinking men and women. But he said that doesn't mean we can't extend it, which means basically the court now is no longer interpreting the law. It's actually writing the law. It's taking the job of the legislature. It's taking Congress's job and writing laws. And it's been doing this off and on for a while, but this is maybe one of the more egregious ones in the same sense that uh, they declared a few years ago that same-sex marriage was legal uh, as, as uh, opposite-sex marriage. And so we find this erosion, this cutting away of, of the civil rights of the community and the right of states by this, what I would say again, this overreach by the courts to extend themselves in ruling over all the other departments of government. You know, our government was founded with a legislature, uh, an executive branch, and, our, and a judicial branch, and the idea was they would keep each other in balance and in check, but now increasingly the judiciary is taking over and beginning to dictate how the country should be run. Uh, justice Alito is one of the conservative, truly conservative justice, and, and basically he, he said that uh, he disagreed. This is what he wrote. He said, um, if every single American had been surveyed in 1964, it would have been hard to find any who thought that discrimination because of sex meant discrimination because of sexual orientation, not to mention gender identity, a concept that was essentially unknown at the time. Well, that didn't keep Gorsuch and those who are uh, on his side on this position issue from going forth and uh, creating new laws. But the implications, Alito said, are, are frightening to think about. For he, he noted, for example, that when it comes to student athletics, not only does it allow men now to compete against women by just simply saying they're a woman, but also even in the locker room or in restroom situations, you they can go into a woman's locker room or restroom, and even though they still are biologically and physically a male in every sense, 
with a beard down to their belly, if they say, I'm a woman, then you can't discriminate. You can't ask them to leave. This is going to create some real unhappy people, uh, very disruptive. It also says that it, it will force um, the courts basically can assign uh, students to classrooms without regard to their sexual differences. So if you want to have a roommate in college and they send a guy over or they send a transsexual over or whatever, you know, if you're a girl and, and the guy in the room with you is, is, is using your makeup, the reality is you have no right to say, I don't want this person. I don't want as a roommate. Uh, you probably could do it if you find some other reason like, you know, they're, they're, I don't know what you can get rid of roommate because they're unclean or they're crazy. But bottom line is you have no restrictions. But where it really begins to touch you and me, at least me in particular, is he writes the following. He says, the decision may compel religious organizations to employ individuals whose conduct flouts the tenets of the organization's faith and thus forces the group to communicate an objectionable message. This was something that we were really going against and fighting with the Obama administration because the Obama administration was trying to create the Equal Rights Amendment, which basically said that churches couldn't fail or resist hire, hiring somebody who was a homosexual or transsexual uh, for jobs that were non-ministerial jobs. In other words, they say, yeah, if you're a pastor, uh, you have to abide by the tenets of your religious faith. But as con when it comes to a janitor or a secretary or a tech person or whatever, you can't discriminate because of these things because, after all, they're not involved in ministerial work. Well, I hope that you can see the problem with that because as a church, our staff is all involved in ministerial work. It has the idea of value, holding the same values and seeking the same mission. These things are critical for unity and cohesiveness, but also for fellowship. What fellowship, the Bible says, did light have with darkness? And yet the court's saying now, you can no longer make that objection. And they can force you to hire people uh, that violate your religiously held views. Um, I know what that'll lead to ultimately is a comp complete end to organized churches like ours, at least evangelical and biblical ones, that we'll just have to simply go out of, out of business and practice our faith outside of any kind of uh, legal organized structure. Um, it, it just goes on and on because employers aren't going to be able to hire or fire based upon any of these kind of things. And, and, and you have to be careful in what you say that if you refer to a, a guy or as a guy, but he says, I'm a woman, now he, he can basically sue you as for discrimination because he wants you to refer to him as her. This is nonsense and it's crazy, but it also has long-term consequences. And I think for a culture, as a society, this could be very dangerous for us as a nation because Isaiah offered this warning. He said, in Isaiah 520, he says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil or who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. In other words, we find this whole uh, double speak world that we live in that suddenly um, we're giving things their opposite meaning. We call sex love when sex in and of itself is not an expression of love. And sometimes it's an expression of conquest. It's predatorial, it's domination. And so we begin to mess with terminology. And, and as a result, we not only create mental and cultural confusion, but it also begins to endorse something called lawlessness that I want to talk about next time. But bottom line is he says, woe to those who do these things. So when Judge Gorsuch says that even though it doesn't say, uh, uh, is, is, is gender specific, in other words, because the law says that their uh, sex means male and female, as far as the founder's intent was, Nonetheless, we're giving it a new meaning and we're doing it because that's what we want to do and that's what we think is right. And God says, woe to you when you do those kind of things, that his judgment is going to fall. As Christians, you know, we need to be praying. We need to be uh, speaking. We need to be voting. We need to be making our presence known in order to stand up against the evil that's coming, that we need to be the one who stands in the gap, as I talked about earlier in the week. Well, I pray that God will motivate you and stir you in your heart as you reflect upon these things this week. In Jesus' name, amen.